Alright, welcome to part two of Charlie's Titanic series. In the background is from the movie Titanic. Yes. Now, I'm going to read a little bit of history of the Titanic for those of you who don't really know too much about it or haven't really followed it too much. So, here we go. On May 31st, 1911, a ship designed to become one of the most famous in the world slid down the waves of the Harlan and Wolf shipyards of Belfast, Ireland. The RMS Titanic's career was to be very short, but her sinking would result in the creation of the International Ice Patrol and demands for much more stringent safety requirements for passenger ships. She was big, over 882 feet long and 92 feet wide. She had a propulsion system that enabled cruising at 21 knots or more. She archived 24 knots with ease during her trials. She was perhaps the most lavishly appointed vessel ever to float and could carry 2,500 passengers with a crew of 900. She was designed so that if any two of her 16 watertight compartments were to flood, or even if the first floor were open to the sea, she would remain afloat. These features were considered to make her virtually unsinkable by any known danger. The term, quote-unquote, virtually unsinkable, was coined by her builders, but was toted by the press as meaning unsinkable. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic left Southampton, England, and called at Cherbourg, France, in Queenstown, Ireland, before heading west to New York on her maiden voyage with 2,200 souls on board. In those days, captains were scorned by their fellow shipmasters if they allowed a little thing like reports of icebergs to show their, slow their crossing. This thing's like weird. Full speed whenever possible was the only thought, and often this was even done in fog. Many small fishing and sailing boats are said to have disappeared without a trace in the vicinity of the shipping lanes, but no one serving aboard a liner would ever have seen anything if asked about it. Many times safety was sacrificed to speed. No comment. Nevertheless, the White Star Liner had been provided with four extra lifeboats, collapsible, over and above the number specified by regulation, and is cruising at 22 and a half knots, somewhat south of the known ice. The night was perfectly clear and starry, and the Titanic's path lay. A black bird, a recently overturned iceberg, whose unturned undersides were a blue color and perfectly camouflaged against the calm sea. When the Titanic struck this black bird, fully one-third of the ship's length was open to the sea. She went down two hours and 40 minutes later, taking her 817 passengers and 673 crew members. According to the British report number CD 6352, a total of 499 passengers and 212 of the crew were saved. The unusual, the, the unusual accepted figure of how many were lost has since been revised to 1,500. Wow, I look all, you know, newsy or something. Most of the passengers lost were e either steerage class, who were only allowed to deck when nearly all boats were filled, or others who simply refused to leave because the Titanic was, after all, unsinkable. Now, there's several movies like A Night to Remember and other versions, and of course, James Cameron's Titanic, which mostly paid attention to the love line, but also they showed a lot of true details in the movie as well as to what happened that night, according to survivors that were on the Titanic. So, it's very interesting, especially going back in history for the Titanic. So, anyway... To introduce the first parts, I'm going to start with the stand for the Titanic ship. And like it says, you needed some scissors, some tweezers, some glue. I have all that stuff somewhere. But right now, I'm just starting out by cutting the pieces. And this is why you need the scissors, so that you can cut at the edges. It's easier instead of just trying to snap pieces off, 
because you might wind up breaking the part, so it's best to use scissors. Especially since these are like really tiny parts. And it's always interesting because it's fun doing stuff like this. And like I said, I would have got an even bigger model if I could have found one that was way cheaper, but no comment. So, this is just the base of the stand right here. And then these are the sides. It just says RMS Titanic on it. I know it's white, so you can hardly see it. But, um, it'll pretty much click on like that. And click on there on the side. And then why you need, like, tweezers or, like, a, um, nail file is so that you can actually file down the sides of, uh, the parts that you tore off there. So that it's not so messy or whatever. And this is fun, like, I, I never thought about this in the past, but when I get really, really bored, to just buy models. Just buy models, because it is fun. It takes up the time. You don't even notice the time going by, because you're so into your model. And I know if I would have got an even bigger model, yeah, that would take me a while to complete that, but I wouldn't mind, because it'd be fun. And then when you're, when you see the outcome of your ship come alive, it's like, I did that, really? Nice. And all the parts on here are numbered, so you know which part goes to which part. Okay, so there we go. Let me get my filer somewhere. And listen to this while I go get the filer. the instructions gives you detail by detail of what to do. It tells you the numbers of where to put each part, so it's very simple. That, this part is when, during the movie, when Titanic was taken off for her maiden voyage. Jack and his friend were at the front of the boat when he was all like, I'm the king of the world. guys have known that I have recited movie lines in the past, and during this series, I will definitely be reciting some movie lines, but... But anyway, you know I don't like to keep my parts too long, so coming up next, I'm going to start the assembly of putting this together. I'll start it a little bit, and I'll show you guys the other parts as it goes. So, stay tuned to part three of the Titanic series. Hop! Huh? 